Hello everyone. Welcome to this next video on the series of mathematical logic. This video we will talk about how to prove problems on theory of inferences using the method of conditional proof. As we have seen in our earlier videos, the problems on theory of inference can be approached through many methods. Like uh, we can uh, use direct method, we can use indirect methods, we can use uh, inconsistency method and in the series to follow we will now see what is the method of conditional proof and how to use this CP or conditional proof method to solve the problems on theory of inferences. Come on, we will quickly move on to the problem. Definition What is meant by rule CP or conditional proof? If a formula S can be derived from another formula R and a set of premises, then the statement if R then S can be derived from the set of premises alone. How can that be done? Now, note that if you have a conclusion which is going to be of the format if R then S. So, what do you call this kind of statement as? You call this as a conditional statement. So, if you have a conditional statement as a conclusion, then what do you do is you take your R as an additional premise and derive your S using the given premises and R. That is, if we have H1, H2 up to Hn to be the given set of premises, this if part which is your R is also taken along with the premise and the then part which is your S is being derived for. So this is equivalent to proving if you are going to do it in this way then it is equivalent to showing that the set of premises is going to infer you the conditional statement if R then S. So notice this rule CP best works when the conclusion C part is going to be a conditional statement. Keep it in mind what is meant by an conditional statement. A conditional statement is going to be a statement of the format if P then Q. So if you are going to have a quantity of this nature then the rule CP is going to best suit for our solving purpose. Now we will quickly move on to apply this rule CP to solve problems. Come on. Check the validity of the following arguments. If A works hard, then either B or C will enjoy themselves. If B enjoys himself, then A will not work hard. If D enjoys himself, then C will not. Therefore, if A works hard, then D will not enjoy himself. So, we need to first convert these statements as propositions. So, let us form the propositions. Let A be the proposition that A works hard okay next let b be the proposition what is do b doing a is going to work hard and b is going to enjoy himself b enjoys himself okay so let b be the proposition b enjoys himself okay there is also the third fellow who is c who is going to enjoy himself and how about the next one D this D fellow is also enjoying so the only person to do the job is going to be just A so let D be the proposition D enjoys himself okay so there are four fellows A B C and D in which just A alone works and B C and D enjoy themselves okay now let us convert these proposition into hypothesis what are going to be my hypothesis h1 now we see that there is going to be an if part which is present over here and a then part which is present over here which means that the given statement is going to be a conditional statement so how can i rewrite this if a works hard then and we have either B enjoying himself or C enjoying himself. If I write it as if A then B, you say if A works hard then B enjoys himself. But I will have to include the C also enjoys to himself. So C also enjoys himself when A works hard. So how to connect it? 
Now notice that there is going to be one more quantity called as connective present between this B or C. So how it is presented as it is presented as an OR operator. So how to introduce this OR operator between B and C? B and C is introduced with an OR operator B or C. Now if you read it in this way we will have it as if A works hard then B or C will enjoy themselves. So this is going to be an point to note over here. Next the remaining things are going to be much simple. We will see again there is an if. If B enjoys, if B enjoys then A will not work hard. A working hard is given as A. Not working hard will be given by negation A. H3 hypothesis 3. If D enjoys himself, if D enjoys himself, then C will not enjoy. So, C will not. So, this not will give me a negation of C. Therefore, if A works hard, then D will not enjoy himself. So, this therefore says that this is going to be my conclusion part. So, what is my conclusion part? If A works hard, then D will not enjoy himself. Enjoying himself and not enjoying himself. So, this is going to be my negation D. So, I have the hypothesis as if A then B or C. If B then it is going to be my negation C. Uh, sorry, negation A. If D then negation C and the conclusion which has the part if A then negation of D. Now, we notice that what happens in my negation part, uh, sorry, the conclusion part, the conclusion part is going to be a conditional statement, a conditional statement uh, if and then. So, what you are going to do over here to solve this is you take the if part over here also as an additional premise. So, you take this if part as an additional premise over here and then making use of all those four statements we now lead to the conclusion called as negation d this is going to be our task over here so apart from the given premise include the additional premise as the if part if part of your conclusion and then arrive at the then part of your conclusion so we will start the process with keeping these hypotheses and the extra additional premise as the input. We will draw our table which contains step number, statement and rules. We will begin with step number 1. Step number 1, we need to know that the if part is introduced as the additional premise. So, our first step must be introducing the additional premise. Okay. And now I can start introducing the remaining quantities. The next one which is related to A will be my first hypothesis. Let me introduce A then B or C. It is an existing statement so you call it by rule P. Now I know A and A goes to B will lead me to B. So this A and A goes to B or C will lead me to B or C. So this is going to be my rule T of step 1 and my step 2 using my modus ponens. Now we know that if we have a if p then q it is equivalent to negation p or q. So if I have a b or c then it is equivalent to writing negation b then a c. So, it is just the other way round. When you have a negation P, you have a P. When you have a B, then it has to be a negation B. And then the remaining part follows. And we know that this is given by negation B. Then C. So, what is this now? This is going to be my rule T of my step 3 using the equivalence law. Equivalence. Next, let me introduce this one related to B. So, number 5, I have if B, then it is negation A. That's given as a rule P because it's an existing hypothesis. Let me try to club these two quantities, but I need an B and then a quantity over here. 
so let me flip this equations in which case flipping will give me negation of the data so negation of negation a will give me a and then it is going to be negation b a then negation b so it is going to be rule t of step 5 and the flipping rule is called by the name contra positive next i can combine this a goes to negation b and negation b goes to c with a chain link like a to b b to c and so i will have this as a going to c so this is going to be my rule t from step 6 and step 4 and i am using hypothetical syllogism so now the next stage let me introduce uh, a and then uh, what we have over here is going to be the next hypothesis 8 1 if d then negation c so this is going to be my rule p now to club with this again i need the uh, c part of it so let me flip the equation number 8 so this has c then negation d so this leads me to a uh, rule t of my step number 7 and 8 using no i am just flipping right so it's just rule number 8 contra positive in the next step i know that now a goes to c and c goes to negation d so using these two quantities a to c and c to negation d what will be happening i will be having this a goes to c and c goes to negation d to club as a goes to negation d so this is going to be my step number 10 keep in mind what has to be the conclusion to be derived at the conclusion we require is negation d so if i am arriving at the then part then my problem is solved okay now we have arrived at a stage a goes to negation d now we had something in our additional premise called as a now let me cup this a and a goes to negation d what does a and a goes to negation d infers to me so this infers negation d and we have missed this rule this is going to be rule and uh, how did we get this rule using modus ponens rule t a goes to c and c goes to a goes to c and c goes to negation d 7 and 9 so we have rule 7 and 9 with modus ponens to give us and a and a goes to negation d gives us negation d using our rule so this is going to be rule t of step number 1 and step number 10 again using this is going to be modus ponens and uh, sorry for this this is not modus ponens this is going to be hypothetical syllogism so now we have arrived at negation d negation d is going to be the conclusion of the quantity so what do we do along with the given set of hypothesis we introduce the then part and we were able to arrive at the if part after introducing the if part we were able to arrive at the then part so this says that the rule conditional proof can be attained easily when we are going to use the method of rule cp we will try doing one more problem of this kind check if the following arguments if you help me then i will do my homework if you do not help me then i will go to sleep early if i sleep early then the teacher will punish me leads to the conclusion if i do not do my homework then the teacher will punish me okay so we will see how these things work so what are the quantities present you will have to help me right so this gives me first let p be the proposition you help me don't take an if because that is going to be the part of a conditional statement the next one is i will do my homework so let q be the proposition i will do my homework and 
if you are not going to help me then what is the thing i will do is i will sleep early so let r be the proposition i will go to sleep early and anything left out is the important part what happens as a consequence the teacher will punish me so let r s be the proposition the teacher will punish me so now using all these propositions let us form our hypothesis so hypothesis number 1 there is a if there is a then if you help me if p then i will do my homework is going to be q hypothesis number 2 if you do not help me not over here so do not help me negation p then i will then there's a then i will go to sleep early i will go to sleep early is denoted as r and next hypothesis number 3 again if i sleep early if i sleep early is going to be my r what is the consequence of it then the teacher will punish me is my s and these have to lead to the conclusion what is the conclusion now if i if again and if i do not do my homework i will do my homework do not do my homework is negation q then the teacher will punish me is going to be my s so notice that the conclusion is going to be a conditional statement a conditional statement is going to be a conclusion then it best works using your rule cp and what does your rule cp say rule cp says along with this take the additional premise as your if part what is the if part it is the negation q and then you arrive at the conclusion as your the then part which is going to be your s so we will quickly try solving this part so step 1 we introduce the additional premise first additional premise negation q is going to be my additional premise okay step 2 we will introduce something related to it uh, if p then q it's your rule p now i need negation p q so let me flip this negation q then negation p is going to be my rule t of step 2 contra positive so negation q and negation q then negation p will lead me to negation p so this is rule t step 1 and 3 modus ponens now let us introduce things related to negation p a uh, negation p then r so this is going to be my rule p now combining your negation p and negation p to r will lead me to r so this is going to be my rule t step 4 and 5 modus ponens now introduce the one related to your r if r then s so it is your rule p now combining your r and r goes to s we arrive at s yes, that is our rule t of step 6 and 7 using modus ponens yes we have done it we have arrived at the conclusion called as s yes, starting from the if part which was my negation p so this is that rule cp can be easily used to solve a conclusion which is going to be of conditional type i hope that this video helped you to understand what is meant by conditional proof and how to approach the problems on theory of inferences using the conditional proof or rule cp method happy learning keep learning thank you very much